Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have breaking news. Damian Lillard has requested a trade. Holy shit. It's about time. Sweet, sweet relief. You know what it feels like? What? Like you lost your virginity all over again. <laughs> it's just, it really it's does, the, bro. The, the sweet relief of it all. It's a it's hey, yo, but yeah. It, it really happened does. at the it happened at the most perfect time for some people. <laughs> I I'm so happy today. Me too. What's going on, y'all? It's the day ones. I'm Anthony. That's Kyle. We gotta talk about it. Damian Lillard has officially requested a trade from the Portland Trailblazers. Yes, he has. Um I think this is like I said, this is perfect timing. For both the team and for Dame. Dame's not getting any younger. They just drafted Scoot. Now's the time. Before his trade value plummets. So yeah. I it's it's perfect. Yeah. And we 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 sat on here when we reacted to the draft live. Mm-hmm. They picked Scoot. We were like, <laughs> Dame's out of here. He's about yeah, to get on the <laughs> phone. And then we saw the Instagram lives. Yep. And if it wasn't that, it was the Jeremy Grant contract. Yeah. That was the, that was the nail in the coffin. That's mm-hmm. facts. Yeah. Hey, at least Jeremy Grant has his own team now. Yeah. Good for him. And, and Scoot. <laughs> and Scoot, yeah. <laughs> crazy. It, it's, it's crazy, though, because Damian Lillard is a dying breed. He is. Of those players that, through thick and thin, they stick with the team. That drafted them. And we've seen that with Kobe, Dirk, mm-hmm. uh, MJ for a little bit. Um, Dame was Dame was cut from that cloth. So all, all the all the in years past, he's get he gets the question of <clears throat> you know, go ring chase, go team up with some guys. He was like, nah, I'm cool doing it here. In Portland. But after a while, it it just doesn't it just doesn't fit. No. It's not it's just not gonna happen. Mm-mm. Too many guards. I do think though, the Blazers will get another guard back and they'll be in the same boat regardless. But who gives a shit? Damian Lillard's on the move. Yeah. I do think the Blazers would with, with whatever package they get back, and we'll get more into that. I've got five trade scenarios that I want to share with all y'all. Um, they're going to be a fun league pass team. Yeah. Yeah. You got the number three. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be. Um, I mean, for the most part, the off season has been kind of boring. Yeah. So this popping up on everybody's Twitter feed, if y'all haven't run out of scrolls, I have, but I I (laughs) caught the, I caught the bleacher report noty. Um, if you haven't run out of your scrolls, this blew up Twitter. Yeah, it absolutely up the off season. Yeah, th- this shakes the entire structure of the league with one player. Um, and fun fact, just because you know I'm a Warriors guy. Now that Dame's getting traded, Steph, Clay, and Draymond are the only guys to be with their team for ten plus years. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but we buy championships. <laughs> My left ass. But Kevin Durant bought a championship. Steph didn't. Nah, he was a hired gun. Hired gun. <laughs> he he played the if you can't beat him, join him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I res- I respect it though. Dude's got a ring, can't take it away from him. Facts. I don't right. I don't respect it, but facts. No. It's cool. No. It's cool. Right. I think we should get in, into some of these trades. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's start it off. This is the package that I think is 100% going to happen. This is what I cooked up. Damian Lillard moves to the Miami Heat. The Blazers receive Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, a 2024 first-round pick, and a 2026 first-round pick. Thoughts? I I, I think uh, – I don't think that's too bad, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, 
if you're Miami, you really don't want to give up Tyler Hero. I, I, I can see them kind of being stingy in that part. But, I mean, if, if that's what you got to do to get Damian Lillard, I so be it. Um, it's going to it's going to be tough, though, because, you know, you lost Gabe Vincent, you lost Max Strews. Now you're trading away Hero and Robinson. Yep. Um, that's tough. That's mm-hmm. tough. But that, th- think about Jimmy Butler, Damian Lillard, and Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo. That, that's a crazy mm-hmm. trio. It is. And I think I think because of the, the losses that Miami has taken – if Dane chooses that that's where he wants to go, I mean, it's not set in stone yet, even though we're all leaning that way. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be held up for a while because you're losing these two guys and you already lost so many guys in free agency. Maybe they try to get away with maybe an extra pick or two and swap Hero for Kyle Lowry. Maybe. I just I just don't think that's enough. So, it, And it shouldn't be enough when you're trading for a guy that at the peak of his powers is probably the second or third best point guard in the NBA. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, but yeah, I mean, that that's a package right there, and he he's expressed interest about going to Miami. So he has, and we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Let's get let's get into this next one though. Um, I have the Nets as a potential trade place. I don't know why. I don't know why the Nets are in the discussions with like James Harden and Damian Lillard, but because I saw the name on Twitter, we're going to bring it up. I have Dame going to the Nets in exchange for Mikhail Bridges, Spencer Dinwiddie, a first round pick in 2025, which is a Houston right swap. So either way, it's probably going to be a higher pick and a 2029 first round pick from Dallas. I think that this is the better package, if you're asking me. Yeah. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie's probably on the same like tier of player as Duncan Robinson, and I think Mikhail Bridges is better than Hero right now. Yeah. We just saw a guy, this is two years ago, was in the top three running for Defensive Player of the Year, and then he gets traded and it goes out and starts to average upwards of like 23 a game for his new team. Yeah. That's dangerous. Facts. Mm-hmm. Problem is, does Brooklyn want to give that up? I think so. Because there's there's more moves to be made out there. There's always a surprise trade at some point throughout the season or the year. Um, and I think I think they have a lot in Brooklyn. Even if they yeah. let go of those two guys, like they're deep as hell. Yeah, they're not competing. With, with just Dane, so maybe they package the Cam Johnson and, like, Cam Thomas contracts together and go out and try to get another star. Right. But but I don't know. I saw the Nets were interested, so this is the best that I can come up with where I feel like I feel like it's a fair trade. And plus, Mikhail Bridges fits the timeline with the Blazers. He's another young guy you could bring in there. They don't. That's the one position they probably need the most is that right. small forward, like, Small forward, like the three, the two to the two to four guy, I think is what they're missing. Plus defense. So yeah, I actually really like this trade for the Blazers. I hate it for the Nets because you're not competing. And right. I think, they, like I said in the off season video, they should be committing to the youth movement. But yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> for me, I think that I think this trade for the Nets doesn't really make sense no, because they should be committing to the youth movement. And they like having Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson absolutely come step up as cornerstones of the franchise for the future mm-hmm. at the end of last season. To move off of that just it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. No. So I mean I maybe mm. I, I don't know. I, I, I'd probably say like that's a no for me. Yeah. Unless unless there's a three team trade idea for the Nets, which I don't really that think could of, that could work. That that could be possible, especially yeah. because they have the capital plus the assets. Um, but yeah. again, we'll we'll see. I lo- I if the if the Blazers decide hell with what Dame wants, we're gonna get what's best for our team. I think this is probably 
the route they should go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, moving yeah. on. Next one I have, the Los Angeles Clippers receive Dame. This is, this I think is a terrible package, but if the Clippers are really in the running and Dame might decide to go there, there's really only one trade that they can make, and it's for all these guys. You got Norm Powell, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, a 2028 first round pick, which is a junior in high school and not even a junior in high school. Like this dude's probably in ninth grade. And then you have a 2030 first round pick. This guy just came out the womb. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I really only think there's one option for Dame. It's probably the heat, but yeah. if, if, if he decides to go to the Clippers and the Blazers accommodate, this is probably the package that they're going to have to do. Cause I doubt they're going to want to give up Paul George. I don't think the Blazers will want Paul George. Because again, they're not going to compete with just Paul George. So, right. What do you think? It's, it's probably not enough because they they don't have the the close enough future picks, um, and they don't have like the contracts to really make it work unless you're throwing in PG Kawhi. Right, and on the Clipper side too, like to blow up your bench to yep. get Damian Lillard, you're pretty much putting yourself in the same situation as the Phoenix Suns and Dallas Mavericks just yes. to get another star on the team. And like I've said on this program numerous times, that doesn't always work. No, it doesn't. We have, we've seen a fair share in history of it work. The Warriors, the Wait Celtics, uh, the, the, the Heatles, the Miami Heat. Um, but it doesn't always work. The Nets two years ago, the, the Suns last year, mm. the the Mavs last year with Luca and Kyrie just it doesn't always work. No. Um maybe maybe their their bench is a little deeper than like Phoenix when they Yeah, they they did re- they did resign Russ, which I think is a nice bench piece. Yeah. He him on a second unit not having to worry about like playing with other stars as much because he's running the second unit might be effective. Yeah. But again, who is that second unit? So Right. So, yeah, that, that that's my take on it. I mean, they they could do it, but mm-hmm. again, uh, don't don't blow up your bench just because you want to get another star. I mean, the the league's been leaning this way since last year with the Denver Nuggets. Um you, you got to have a deep bench to win championships. Agreed. Next trade I have here. This one's kind of interesting. I personally didn't see anything about the Utah Jazz until like right before this this episode we're doing. So here's what I have in mind if the Jazz really are interested. Obviously, Dame goes to the Jazz. This is really the only trade that works. Blazers receive Colin Sexton, Jordan Clarkson, Kelly Olynyk, and three first-round picks relatively soon. They get a 2027 LA pick, which I think is kind of underrated because I doubt LeBron will be there and AD will be like 34 and they also get both the Jazz's picks in 2025 and 2027. So, yeah. I don't know. Th- this one's interesting. Like, I could see it being a good trade if the Blazers are somewhat successful next year because this is this rounds out your bench, basically. Um, I just – I don't know. I mean, who's he playing with in, in Utah that's real? I mean, it's Dame, Laurie, John Collins – Right, like I don't know, man. That yeah, I when when I when I saw Utah being interested in Dame, mm-hmm. it's like it's like the the meme of like the the the, the military troopers, yep. behind behind cover, and the clown is just right in the middle. That's the Utah <laughs> Jazz. In that this is scenario, the Utah bro. Jazz. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. They have the, the Utah Jazz have no business going after Damian Lillard. They don't. I could say the same thing about the Nets. Yeah, the only that, difference yeah. is the Nets have a package. Like that's yeah. pause. pause. Hey yo, bro. Hey, yo. Pause. yeah, big pause, big pause. Um, but again, the Jazz are a rebuilding team. The Nets are rebuilding. Why are you gonna gut the young core and just completely? erase all the progress 
mm-hmm. for Damian Lillard. Like, like what do you like? What are you gonna do? It's not like you're gonna win a championship. No, I I do think Dame, John Collins, and Laurie is fun. It it's fun. Yeah, but is it gonna beat Jokic, Murray, or LeBron, AD, and the deep ass benches they have? No, 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 it's mm-hmm. not. No, but. I, I don't know, dude. It, it, it's a pretty shitty trade, to be yeah. honest. But I mean, what are they gonna? They can't throw in John Collins because he's on that on that the the stipend rule or whatever it's called, where yeah. he can't be traded for ninety days. I I assume Dame wants to get out of there sooner than that. And they're not gonna trade Laurie because he was just an All Star last year. So right. That's that's my personal opinion. I think the Jazz probably get themselves out of it by not offering a big enough package. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I, if I was Utah, I wouldn't touch this with a twelve foot pole. No, but hey, what what do, what do we know? Yeah, we don't know shit. So <laughs> it is what it is. All right, this is my next trade. This is my final trade, probably my most favorite, because I had to put my thinking cap on. So let's talk about it, okay? This is including James Harden wants out, Dame wants out, the Blazers need pieces. This is how I think they do it. So. The 76ers receive Damian Lillard and Robert Covington. Clippers, they receive James Harden. And then the Blazers get four players, Norma Powell, P.J. Tucker, Avicii Zubac, Tyrese Maxey, a 2028 wow. first, and a 2030 first. This one, I, I, I had to go deep in the bag for this one, as we say. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I think everybody wins here. Blazers get get their hands on Maxi without having to give up another like big time rotational piece. PJ Tucker wasn't shit for them last year. Plus, they bring back Robert Covington. I think it's kind of worth it. Yeah. The Clippers they don't really give up. All they give up is their one center on the roster, which I'm sure they can replace with another move because they don't give up too much either here. Right. Like in terms of depth. So maybe they can use a Marcus Morris contract from the other trade and try to go get a center. Right. I think if it's not the Heat, this is the only route that all these teams can take where it makes sense for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Yeah, I mean, James Harden gets out of there. And mm-hmm. then you got, a, you got a big three in L.A. with the with PG, Kawhi, Harden. Mm-hmm. Damian Lillard, he comes, he comes to tan. Yep. Him, you still Joel keep... Embiid. Yep. And then mm-hmm. it's just going to be a matter of surrounding those two guys with as good a role players as you can get. Because mm-hmm. you traded away Maxi, you got rid of PJ Tucker, mm-hmm. you brought back Rocco. Um, but yep. still... that's more that's more of a salary dump to make the to trade work, but I think, I think it works for the Sixers. I mean, Robert Covington hasn't been himself in recent years, but he's going to be in a contract year. So last year of his deal, if it works out, they probably resign him for cheap and they're, you know what I mean? They're good. They're in contention because of that. Right. Or he's bad. You only have him for one year. You let him walk next off season, open up some money. Yeah. So, and I think losing Tyrese Maxey's big, but I, I, I think Dame will – it's enough. I think Dame and Embiid with Tobias Harris playing three, being third fiddle, works. Because I do yeah. think I do think when it was Maxi Harden, and Embiid, Tobias is too talented to be getting 12 shots a game, in my opinion. People, people make fun of Tobias Harris because he doesn't perform in the playoffs. He's probably been their most consistent player. Yeah. Like for a while now. He has. He's he's been he's been pretty underrated. I mean, he's had his he moments has. good or bad, but mm-hmm. yeah, he's been he's been solid over the last few years for the Sixers. He has. So. But what's yeah, your that, favorite what's your favorite trade? What's the best? Um trade? That one's actually I think that one's my favorite just because every, everybody's not gutting their entire roster to make the trade work yeah um everybody has kind of flexibility to to stay in contention 
mm-hmm. and compete. And then on the Blazers side, you know, they get young assets and pieces and draft picks to kind of help kickstart the rebuild yeah. um, around Maxi. So I, I the, like I like that one. Yeah, and the other the other thing about that trade too that I didn't really bring up is like you bring back all these guys that might take minutes away from your young core, but Norman Powell is a perfect trade deadline guy. Hey, a, like a Milwaukee Bucks offers two first round picks for Norman Powell. You know what right. I mean? Avicii Zubac, Avicii Zubac, a team needs a big, like the Warriors. Hey, take our 2027 first round pick. Bring us, give us Avicii Zubac, right? They are they can right. build more That's assets fun. off these guys. Mm-hmm. Right. And all of them are locked up for at least two years. So teams will be willing to make those trades because it's not like, okay, we get to rent you for 30 games, maybe the playoffs, chemistry's through the roof. I mean, it's like in the toilet. Right. And it just doesn't work out. Then you lose them for nothing. So, I yeah. I think I do think that's my favorite trade. It's not my favorite destination for him. I I'd, I'd rather see him yeah. go to the Heat. Just yeah. seeing the two the two biggest guys outside of Chris Paul that we want to see win a ring would be on the same team. It'd be so awesome. Could you, bro? Could you imagine both of them being up on the podium with the Larry O'Brien Trophy? Oh man, I don't know who I want the Finals MVP to go to. <laughs> Facts. I wouldn't have a clue. Sp- that, co- co- they might, yeah, co MVP. They oh. might have to share it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, we just wanted to get this video out to you guys because it's huge news. I love the NBA, so I love talking about this shit. Um, and hopefully, by the next pod we do, we'll be able to react to where he goes and what the trade package is. So, yeah, we'll see how correct you are. We will see. I haven't been very incorrect this offseason. Yeah. So, uh, alrighty, guys. It's been the Day One Podcast once again. Um, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tune into the Day One Pod. Um, whether you're on a boat, you're on a bus, you're on a plane, you can get our content wherever you are because Elon Musk put a Starlink satellite in space. And you can get Wi-Fi anywhere. Yeah. So, make sure you pay attention. You know what I mean? Lock in because y'all are always asleep. Okay? Y'all got to wake up. Hey, that's uh-huh. disrespectful to the people. Hey, listen, I just, I, listen, I'm facts over feelings. I got to tell the truth. <laughs> I got to tell the truth. Okay? I, I so, respect it. Yeah, I respect it. All righty, y'all. I'm Kyle. That's my, po- that's my uh, co-host, Anthony. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Peace.